Aloha. Um, so my understanding is that the organizers were intending for uh, for two speakers from each side to to speak, and then to flip to the other side. Uh, so um, Zuriaki is not available today, but he was supposed to speak first. So Davis, why don't you take his five minutes as well as your five minutes? How do we change these things, and how do we work with the system and utilize the tools? That essentially that's all it is to me. Government is on tool. Whether it be kingdom law, state law, American law, international, it's all a tool. And the thing that we, that I try to never forget in every step of participation that I engage in is that this is about the people and the Aina. For me, I gotta look past the kingdom history. It's a small window. We have a thousand years of history prior to that where the focus was people and Aina. And that is when our people flourished. People were surviving once the Westerners came. When the focus was people in Aina, they flourished. So how do we get back to that focus? How do we get that intertwined in every piece of policy that comes out of whatever government it is we're going to participate in? So that said, I engaged in the AHA, not as a supporter of federal action, not as a supporter of independence, but how do we get down to the facts? There's so many mistruths flying around in the air how do we get down to the facts where people can stop looking at each other as enemies on opposite sides of the battlefield, but to engage with each other? Because unless we galvanize, it's not going to be an answer. I mean, it's going to be a very hard road forward. We as Hawaiians, given our history, given where our children are, given where our spouses are, given where incarceration is, we must take every tool. We must not deny ourselves our elders or the next generation of millennials, any tool, whether that is a state tool, a federal tool, or an international tool, that is the reality. And what I have come here to tell you is that very strongly, one of the mistakes we are making because it's sexy, because it's easier, is that we think it's independence or a native government to government relationship with the United States. And we have got to stop selling that snake oil. It is not one or the other. It is both. No Hawaiian should be opposed to independence. It's in our DNA. And that is a pathway that must be traveled, traversed consistently. And it will take many generations. Because until the global power changes, and the United States is no longer in charge of the UN, you can worship the UN, but that is the United States today. They are on the Security Council, they have veto power. That is the reality we live in today. So we keep the fire burning and the work that, that is being done on the international level, just as Indian people are doing. And we must grab hold of every tool and federal recognition, again, is not a healthy government, young lady. Federal recognition is not a government. It is not a, a form of government. It is a relationship. The government is what we may choose. Now, what was the mindset of my kupuna, my grandpa, born and raised in Kalihi? He and his parents, they were for independence. In fact, in 1897, 90% of everybody in Hawaii was for independence. Fast forward to 2014, I went to Keaukaha, because I'm one from the Big Island, 100% of the Hawaiians there were for independence. So nothing has really changed. However, when you read this palapala that they're supposed to be using to, to define who we are, they said, oh, there were general comments, both supporting and opposing. Poor lie! 100% of the people were against it, and here we get this of supporting and opposing stuff. Uh, next question. Aloha. Aloha. <clears throat> um, real, I'll be real um, short with a question. Um, one of my friends, professor of international law, who specializes in human rights and self-determination, who I think is qualified 
to say what she said. <clears throat> her name is Maivan Lam. Many of us know her. She's been an ally for many years. She said that during the time of the DOI hearings when they came around to the islands, she said that the essence of self-determination, and I'm going to play the self-determination game right now. Of course, I'm for independence. But she said the essence of self-determination, nothing could be more self-determining than showing up in person and testifying as a real live human being, testifying your vote, yay or nay. So we were, she said, that is the most powerful expression of self-determination in person. And so we were dismayed to learn um, that the DOI rules passed because most of us, many of us, witnessed all the hearings on each island. And some of us, including myself, actually counted the numbers. And the numbers averaged around 100, 50, 155 testifiers. And we counted those numbers and just about consistent with every hearing on every island, about 95% of the testifiers said aole to the rules. No, we don't want them. So how did they pass is my question. And my understanding is that pro rule, the people who were in support of the rule passage organized this postcard campaign where you just check off that you support it and mail in the postcard. And so were the postcards counted more than the real life Kanaka? How, how, did it, how did they get passed is my question to both sides. How do we explain that? Is that really self-determination? Mahalo. I hear you, uh, that your, the opinion is that the essence of self-determination is that the most powerful expression is, important, is in person. Uh, it's not the, maybe, in person. It's not the only way to express uh, support or opposition, but I think that you must understand that the DOI's job was to evaluate the content of the answers. So did you answer the questions being posed? Their question was, we are looking at promulgating a rule. What do you think about this? What do you think about this? Uh, many of the oral testimonies didn't address those questions. It just said, go home. We don't want you here. So you didn't give them something substantial to say, you, you weren't answering the questions, you were just saying, go home, we don't want your rule. Okay, they noted that. But there was a lot of substantial testimony provided uh, answering those questions that were posed. Uh, and I think that there were card campaigns on both sides. Yes, we saw cards for opposition and we saw cards for... Uh, and that's part of what Davis was talking about earlier, engaging. That is our civic duty. We should definitely be engaged. Whether you check a box, get out and write your testimony, do your oral testimony, it's all, it all counts. Uh, but it comes down to the content. Did you answer the questions that were posed by the DOI? And the question that was posed was a flawed question in the first place <laughs> because they are not to repeat the boss of us. So to come as the boss and act as the boss, when you're not the boss, then all I can tell you is go home, you are not the boss. What more did they expect us to do? What did they want us to say? You know, and the thing is, when our kupuna signed the kue petition, they held a keynote, they went there in person, they pulled him in front of other people as witnesses, and many of them had ramifications because they were pro-Hawaiian, they were pro-the Queen, and many of them lost their jobs, especially those that were working for the state government. So our kupuna stood up and had the balls to stand up as Hawaiian and say, we kue, and I think all of us Hawaiians should do the same thing again now and to be there in person. So Aole and go home, no, we don't want it, sounds pretty substantial to me. I don't know. It's my manao. Right now, they got this, we have a president that is the result of underestimating the American people, 
and then also underestimating the level of racism that's happening in the nation itself. Next slide. And I wanted to point out that part of it is because the American system is broken. And what they've done is, I'd like to do a little bit of analogy of how they've, they've completely been disconnected from their own people and how it's been propagated to over here. And so one of the things that they did was in 2011, they created a Kanai uh, uh commission. And what they did was they didn't, they didn't ask our community, they just assigned it to them because they thought they knew better. Just like you know how the Democratic National Party thought they knew better and to put Hillary in charge? Next. And right now what we're looking at is a major land grab. We, our analysis is, and we don't all agree with this, but what they, what's the main reason why they want to do this? Why are they pushing it through? If you look at and study First Nations and how they have to spend all this time to get recognized the DOI, they want to quiet the title. They want to quiet the land title, 1.8 million acres of seized land. And the only land that we have guaranteed rent is Kohoolawe. Are we going to live there? Can we live there as a people? Next. Is federal recognition a healthy form of government? As a doctor, I can go for miles about all of the different statistics that show that it has really failed the Native American people. Next slide. But really, for those of you who have been following and paying attention, during an administration that's supposedly friendly to Native Americans compared to what Trump is supposed to be, here we have Standing Rock Sioux, standing up for clean drinking water for 12 million people. And this is a response, a militarized response, where they attack unarmed Standing Rock Sioux with over-enthusiastic, like violent, militarized concussion grenades, mace, attack dogs. Next slide. President-elect Trump put a hold on all federal positions from Sally Jewell all the way down to Mr. Stanford Enomoto, who will not be in charge of the Office of Hawaiian Relations. I never thought I would be glad to say anything about President-elect Trump, but I believe that Trump has trumped the DOI rule and it will be DOA rather than DOI. Why are we talking about a federal rule for federal recognition? What is the purpose of this thing? It didn't come from Hawaii, it came down a few years ago. Well, if you didn't read the 172 pages, you might have missed what's on page 59,114. If you read page 59,114, it tells you why we're doing this. We're doing this because some Hawaiians want to exercise inherent sovereign powers so that they can, quote, facilitate the implementation of programs and services that Congress creates specifically to benefit Native Hawaiians. <coughs> the purpose of the rule is not to give to our people self-determination, but to facilitate the ability of a few to gain sole control of the congressional funding and programs. This is an excuse being called federal recognition, but if you read the 172 pages, you'll see that it says that the Hawaiian nation will never have any trust lands. All trust lands held by the state remain with the state. All those held by the federal government remain with the federal government. The only exception for the Hawaiian nation is Kohoolawe, the bombing target, littered with live bombs, no homes, no clinics, no schools for our children. That is what it says. But you didn't have the chance to read it, and no one pushing it is going to explain it to you. The Indian nations have powers the Hawaiian nations will never have. If you read the jurisdictional statutes of the United States, it says that when American Indians and their governments wish to challenge the United States, they go to the federal district court and the United States must respond. Well, if you read what they're saying for our nation, you can try to sue the federal government, but the federal government has sovereign immunity, so they don't have to answer. That is not federal recognition that the American Indians have, not that we are Indians. One of the things that greatly concerns me 
is that this process requires that we relinquish our claims from the overthrow of our independent kingdom, that we relinquish it. We will never be able to retain back what was taken. And I'm very concerned with the deliberate uh, program of misinformation coming from people like Zuriaki saying that there is no human right to restitution. This is a lie, a lie. So you cannot use their words because they forget to tell you what they're asking for. They're asking for domestic recognition. People use the words colonization. We are not colonized. We cannot be because we are recognized as an independent nation among the European nations. So you cannot use that word. There are many words that they throw out. You have to step out of that U.S. box and speak up as a Hawaiian kingdom subject, which I knew as a child when I was cognizant about things going on from age eight. That's been over, what, 60 years, 70? Who knows? I'm not counting anymore. But the thing to, to remember is that you have to know who you are. You have to speak as an equal to the United States, not follow their uh, manifest destiny doctrines, which they are imposing upon us. And so there's nothing wrong with those uh, who want to be uh, Hawaiian Americans. But when you go into the federal recognition program, which we all know from the Akaka Bill, you cannot negotiate anything from the Hawaiian Kingdom. So you being Hawaiian Kingdom subjects, you must first renounce your citizenship to the Hawaiian Kingdom and formally naturalized to the United States to join that little tribe. And I think it should be mandated, mahalo. When we're talking about acquiescing, we have never to publicize a referendum, and this is recognized, that's right, ever, ever said that we will go under the plenary power of the United States. Plenary is absolute. Absolute. By participating in this process, is my saying that we're going to be part of this process. We're agreeing to go under the United States. We've never, our kupuna never, ever agreed to this. We have never, as a people, ever done that. And internationally, and also morally, ethically, we stand to find the fact that our people have never acquiesced. We have never given up. We have never yielded our land. We have never yielded our land. You have a nation that has no land. But we have given it to. That document says federal state lands are off the table. We've never given them our land. And that's what would happen. I honor every single veteran. My father is a veteran. He fought, fought on both sides of this war. He was a veteran for the United States and he was a veteran for our Kanaka Maui people. And that does not invalidate his bravery in either situation. But if we take our land, that is the one thing. Where does the land go? Who decides where the land goes? And they're going to make this decision. They're already negotiating. They're, that's the whole point of it is that this group of people are going to negotiate the land away. And you can't have two different authorities determining where the land goes. You can't. I'll tell you how I want to go. I want to go. my um, we Sorry. let you guys, I don't Thanks. tend to interrupt other people. So, that there is the, the land issue. Who gets to control that? And the question that really comes is not just land, who gets to control these programs? 
And that's really the, the, the question immediately is they are making a bid to control these programs. Kamehameha Schools is one. If they're protecting through Rice versus Cayetano, the de definition of who gets protected to be service, you're talking about Alulike, you're talking about Oha, you're talking about Queen Lily Old Children's Center, you're talking about Kamehameha Schools, they are going to be determining who gets control over those. And I have to ask, and I have to ask you guys, did you guys ask permission from all those people that you're going to negotiate on behalf of everybody under one entity? Who appoints Kamehameha Schools trustees right now? Exactly. Not Hawaiians. Not Hawaiians. And secondly, federal statute, Title 12, does not allow us to move forward past the recognition if we want to secure independence. So on both counts, you're wrong. So let's get the facts straight. What federal recognition has do does in reality is it allows the Native people to take their assets and resources and control them up under Native control, rather than a state government or even a federal government uh, having all of that control. Uh, so in a, they are, there are the, the Lakota, the Navajo, all of them, federally recognized Native governments are indeed at the United Nations and should be at the United Nations uh, fighting that fight. You cannot rectify or justify these things. You can take the word independence and stick it in the paper, but it does not provide rights to people. It does not return their land or give them restitution for the overthrow. You can talk words, but it's not the same thing as saying we have our land, we will Neither build Neither does any law on the books right now, uh, either. That is, that is what the difference is. Uh, instead of saying, uh, if you want independence or if you believe in human rights, go to the United Nations. Wrong. We bring the human rights home. We stay home. You go, Washington. <laughs> okay. I can respond to this, can I just really quickly say um, that if the um, Na'iapuni 88 who voted for this, if you can all sign a document saying that they will absolutely refuse any type of government that in any way yields the independent nature of the Hawaiian kingdom, that we will absolutely refuse any negotiation, then maybe we can start talking about this and say that yes, you can have two different pathways. So if you guys, are you guys willing to all agree on that? That every single 88 one of you, that you will absolutely refuse any type of situation that will any way. I would sign on to something like that. Absolutely. I have that's to fight easy. for pursuit of independence to be included. That's an easy, that's yes. That's a compromise. That's how the world works. That's, I don't agree with you. We that's compromise. That's an easy, because that's the reality. Okay, let's work on that. I'll fight. Okay. Hello, you guys. I'm Kalani Kupua Pai Kalani from Mokuoke Aave. We're all here discussing a constitution. My question to you guys is, who voted the participants in to write that constitution? Nobody. When you write a constitution, you have to have delegates. Who's the delegates? It was participants. Never, I, I had to vote for not one representative that could represent and speak for me. Not one person could speak for me because we had no delegates to vote for. Where's the justice in that? How can you say you're writing a constitution without delegates representing the people? Question, simple. How can, how can you be appointed? How can you be appointed participants? I understand that the process is broken. I hundred percent. what? I know. It okay. was what? But it's broken. You're talking about my family's family's family to the beginning of time. No, it was the, broken? Yeah, no, the process, the, beginning? the process, the process, the process of Na'i Apuni okay. is broken. <laughs> We're good, bro. Okay? Wow. The process of Na'i Apuni was broken. That's why I personally, I'm not going to speak for anybody else, I did not believe that the best way to approach that process was to disengage. That's me. And I don't judge anybody else who took their own pathway to disengage, protest, participate. I say for me, I wanted to get in there to see what work was being done and what was going to come out. Now, I know, I, am, I, I know that I didn't go in there representing anybody but my ohana. That's yep. it. Okay? And that's what I went in there and spoke on behalf of. 
So now, and, and, and fought to ensure that nobody in there watching to make sure that nobody in there was gonna take that part up and try and do anything that represented our people without taking it out to the people first. And I can assure you that that constitution will not have any impact on anyone unless it's voted on by our, by our lahui or our potential lahui. Okay, now, question is. But why should it even be voted on when it was developed by a flawed process. I mean, I don't get this. You know, as a teacher, I wouldn't allow you to take something that was heva and then tell you vote on it when we already know it was heva and it was admitted that the process is flawed. So that, that is not a constitution. We shouldn't call it a constitution because it was not created the way constitutions are created, which is through delegates. And certainly, some of the people, and I have to say my own students included, certainly would have never been delegates if there was a vote. And that, those, are, those are legitimate reasons to not engage, but that is yet an indi individual choice. I don't speak for you, and you don't speak for me. But tell them you, you use $33 million of all for money. For all the trust monies was allocated for you guys to do that. So every Native Hawaiian is Native, 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 and we all have our individual choices. And so I absolutely respect Ku's uh, mana'o on that, uh, that she does not like the process, and she made a decision not to engage. I was not in the aha, but I have made a choice for my ohana. I am going to engage. People so were paid to do that. They received money choice, from my trust money. We have to respect each other's choices. Thank you. Hello, my name is Remy Horn, born and raised on Kunawai. Um, I just want to put out some information. There has always been a constitution in the Kingdom of Hawaii. There has always been a seat in a Senate in Washington, D.C. for the Kingdom of Hawaii, which has been empty for many of years. Thank you. Independence, as far as how we get there, uh, is a step that needs to be taken. Uh, I'm not a political expert, but a step that I, I think that a, a crucial step that needs to be taken is a step of struggle. And it's not to say that we haven't been struggling, but we, independence is not something that we're going to ask for and, and it's, it's going to magically appear. It's not something that uh, I can show up to a meeting and testify and answer a question yes or no and think it's going to happen. Independence is something that we need to achieve as a people, that we need, to, we need to fight for, we need to struggle for, we need to go through pain, um, emotional, spiritual, physical, whatever it is. That's what's going to have to happen. We cannot, it, we have to hold on nui, that's one thing. And when I say hold on nui, I'm not saying sit on the side and wait. Yeah, hold on nui, make more time, make time, make time, make time, make time. Keep going, keep going, keep going. When you think you lose, try again. When you think you lose, try again. When you think you win, try harder. We've got to keep going. And so when I think about working towards independence, I mean, I know, kind of obvious, but I think about Mauna Kea. I think about Mauna Kea. We talk about nation building, Kukulu Aupuni, that's where it happened. There was more nation building that took place on Mauna Kea between March and December of 2015 that has ever taken place in whatever efforts Oha and Kana'ilu, no Valu, whatever lot they did make. There's been nation building, there's education, there is awakening, there's awareness. And those are the kind of things that will allow us to achieve what we're going after. But it's a process. It's a, it's a process. And we've got to go on another new And we've got to understand that we're in a position where we are only getting stronger. We're only getting stronger. Kalei Kua is saying, that's the best they got, we already get them beat. If this is the best America's got, we already got them beat because we're only getting stronger. Three generations ago, my, my kupuna signed the Kuei petition. Kahikina, Kahato Uwila, Naho Lua, Makahue, Kumuhone. They signed that petition. And generation by generation, we became a little bit less Kanaka, a little bit less Hawaiian. But the shift has already occurred and it's turned. And I think that our generation, my generation, is in a better state than the generation before me because of the action and the struggles that they went through. And if I continue to struggle, my take and my mo'opun and the generations after me, they'll be in a better position. But we gotta struggle. We gotta struggle. 